So here's my reader question for the week. I've gotten this, this question in a lot of versions and I'm gonna answer it in a way that may feel a little bit vague, but I think it's gonna be really helpful for you whether you're a writer or not. So this is a writer question, but is not a writer question to me. This is a question about meaning and purpose in sort of the big way, and that's how I'm gonna answer it. So this is what Jess wrote to me. Um, God is pushing me to get more serious with my writing. I've been avoiding this for a while now. However, I'm beginning to open up my mind to putting forth the time and effort needed for writing. It's time I start branching out. Literary agent, different publications, any suggestions? Who should I pursue? Okay, so I've got three answers for you, and I'm telling you non-writers out there that I think I'm gonna, this is going to help you as well with kind of how you live an intentional life. But the first thing is this. There's two kinds of writing. There's writing that's an art form, and there's writing for publication, and those are two very different kinds of things. Um, writing as an art form, writing as therapy, writing to know yourself, writing to love someone else in your life through a letter or an email or a text, it is an incredible tool. I mean, it's what God has given us. He's given us language. He's given us his word, and it's the way that we interact with people. It's a hugely awesome and important way to live. Writing for publication is a business. It is an industry. Um, just because you write as an art doesn't mean that you should or want to write for a publication. And just because you write for a publication doesn't mean you're an incredible artist. They are two different things. And the difference between them is huge. But if you feel called to write for a publication, I think this is how you'll know if you want to pursue that. Writing as an art is an incredible, powerful tool and you should pursue it no matter what, whether it's for your small group of friends or uh, your, a letter that you're writing to someone that you love. Like that is very worthy of that calling. Writing though as a publication, writing for publication is a business. And like any business, you have to do the work to get into the business. And like any practice, you've got to practice to be good. Like I'm not a tennis player. So if I'm going to sign up for a tennis tournament, I'm going to do terrible. It's not going to go well, especially if I've never stepped foot on a tennis court and I don't practice. So writing takes practice. And in order to get to this first question, you actually have to do the work. And this is true for any part of your calling, any part of your purpose. So the first question that you have to ask yourself is what is my voice? Um, this is a writing term that is referring to the way that I write. And if you think about um, how you develop who you are, we usually copy other things first. So generally, young writers will sound a lot like the authors that they like. Young singers will sound a lot like the singers that they like. And the only way to find your unique voice that God has given you is to actually do the work, to actually write a lot <laughs> until you find that voice and you can express like, who you really are, and you're not anymore just a shadow of these other things that you've enjoyed and admired, which are good and can be helpful, but you've done the work of finding your voice, and you know um, what that voice is and how it sounds. Um, one of the things that I think uh, people have told me about my writing, which that I just appreciate is that it's honest. That's kind of like the voice that I feel like God's given me to have is a really honest voice. I have a, a one of my favorite authors is Jen Hatmaker. So funny. Like God has given her a humor, a voice of humor. And I, I saw a post recently where she talked about how she thought that that was a liability because you couldn't be like a serious, good Christian and be funny. And in fact, it's like the very thing that actually like characterizes her unique voice, which she brings to the table. So what is your voice? The second big question is, who is your audience? Who are you actually trying to reach? What is your person? What are your people like? Um, a lot of times when we're young in writing or even in life, in purpose and meaning, we think that we're trying to reach everyone. Well, we're kind of vague. Like, I don't know, like everybody. You got to know who you're trying to reach. You have someone that you're trying to reach. And a lot of times who we want to reach, who our audience is, is related to our own story. So um, for example, like I've said this forever, my audience, the people that I love to reach are like, somewhat interested in faith, but don't quite know like how to do it or not really sure how to like feel and experience God. So they're kind of friendly to the idea of faith, but they're sort of more like just living life normal and haven't really experienced day by day relationship with Christ. That's like my own story. That's where I came into life with Christ was that story. Another audience for me is I love like the newcomer. So grew up as an army brat. I was always new. I always notice new people. I'm, I'm like passionate about new people. I see the people who are on the corners of the room who feel insecure when they enter a room. I always see them alone. And I like I was with a friend recently and I was like, I'm sorry, I cannot talk anymore. I have got to go talk to that person because they're standing by themselves and they're new here. And I know what that feels like. That's an example of knowing your audience. So all of y'all, you might... 
You might be a stay-at-home mom who's passionate about homeschooling. You might be um, like a modern-day quilter. You might be like someone who loves tattoos. You may, you may be a person who struggled with depression. You may be um, had a story of a broken family, and you want to reach people who have had that story. You have got to know who you're writing for. One of the things that I do when I'm writing is I'll put a name at the top of the page when I'm writing, and I'll pretend like I'm writing a letter. And I'll like be like, dear, you know, it'll be the person that I'm trying to reach. Dear, it'll be someone in my life that I know. Dear Susie Q. And I will write a whole book as if I'm writing it just to Susie Q. Because I want to keep in the middle of my mind, this is my audience. This is who I want to reach. These are my people. It takes courage to do that because we, we're narrowing our focus. And it's really hard to narrow your focus. But if you want to have meaning and purpose in this life, you have got to narrow your focus. If you just sort of dabble in a bunch of different stuff, you'll miss that opportunity to go deep and strong in like something that you're uniquely wired to do. And this is not just about writing. If you know your voice, let's say that you, let's say that you were a teen mom um, and you know what that feels like and, and you know your audience and you're like, you know what? I know how to talk to teen moms. Well then probably maybe don't mess around with the food pantry and like all these, like maybe engage like deeply in that work. We need all of us to do and run in the lane that God has given us. So who, what's your voice? Who's your audience? And then the final one is, where are they? Like, where do they hang out? So let's say you loved yoga and yoga, like you wanted to write about yoga and the practice of yoga for Christian life. And you're a big yoga person. Well, where are those people? Like, what do they do? What do they buy? Where do they hang out? What magazines do they read? Write for those magazines. Like what websites are they on? Write for those websites. Remember when I started and said it takes work? This is what I'm talking about. If you want to write for publication, you have to actually learn the business. You have to know these things. You have to research these things. You got to be like a stalker. Like you want to know what literary agent you want to go after? You got to read the books, like read all the front matter in the books where, or the back matter where an author says like, thanks so much to my agent. He was so great. And so yeah, if that's the kind of author that you like, well, try to go after that agency. Like what kind of people do you like to read and who are they? Go find where they're published and you try to go after those things. So you can do it. You can do the work, but it's going to take work. And if you're not a writer, but you're sort of like, you know, I don't know like what God really has for me in life. Ask yourself, what's my voice? What do I uniquely bring to the table? Ask a friend to help you with that. Ask yourself, who's my audience? Like, who are my people that I actually really want to reach with this message? And then the third one is where do they hang out? Like where can I find them? And that's where I need to go. I need to go to those places. And when I do, I'm going to discover like what God really has for me in those things. So I hope that's helpful. One practical tool if you are a, a writer who's trying to figure out like the whole industry. Um, go to Chip McGregor's uh, website, McGregorLiterary.com. I'll put it in the comments. Um, he's going to take it down in the next month or so because he's just finished blogging. But if you scroll back, he basically answers every question you would ever want to ask an agent about the industry, about proposals, about how to write, about how to get a platform, all that kind of business stuff. Go to that website, check out his questions. It'll be super helpful to you. Uh, really interesting if you're if you're interested in this world. But remember... If you go down this trail and you're like, mm, I don't know about this, writing is an art and art is not always recognized in like industry. It's not. I mean, if you're an incredible painter, I know some incredible painters. It doesn't mean their work is in the VMFA. Like it's, it's still beautiful art. So don't let just writing for publication keep you from writing for art. But if you know you're called and you want to write and you have a message that you don't feel like is out there, you've got to do the work. You'll get there. Okay.